Hello everyone, my name is Dwar, and today we're going to do a little bit of a slow pace, newer, player-friendly run of Castile. I've been seeing a lot of people asking for a Castile run, or ideas of how to do it. Uh, this is a really simple way that I do it. We're going to turn on Iron Man, achievements can be earned. And we're just going to go into it. We're not going to restart. We're not going to save scum if we don't have to. Uh, let's call this Spain. And we're just going to go. We're going to take over North Africa, finish the Reconquista. We're going to start colonizing. And we're just going to walk through some some pretty basic things. And uh, a pretty good opener that I think uh, works really well on Castile. I've got a couple world conquests with Castile. It's one of my favorite nations. And uh, I've seen a lot of people try to do this in uh, multiplayer as well with great success. So let's just dive right into it. So first things first, what we want to do is... Enrique is 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 horrible, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna throw him out a window <clears throat> and take him down. And his father's not very good either, so we're gonna wait for the, we're gonna hope these guys pass uh, fairly quickly. In the meantime, we're gonna come to our military tab and we're gonna make them both generals. And uh, Juan's not terrible. Enrique's not great, so hopefully they're gonna die. Uh, we're gonna use them early on against uh, Tlemcen. What we're going to do is we're going to build a claim against them, and then we're going to vassalize Tlemcen. And then what we're going to do is attack Morocco and Tunis and finish up Granada. So we're going to try to take a chunk of this, and then we're going to go south into West Africa. It's very important that we go down there. And then uh, we'll see what we can do in the New World. Portugal's definitely going to beat us there, but uh, we'll see what happens. So... Most important things to do at the beginning of the game is come into your estates. It's the last thing. You can hit uh, F1 and then K, or just go to that and click on the far right. So we start with 30% crown land. And this right here will tell us what effect we have. So if you have positive crown land, you get some minor bonuses. And if you get negative, or sorry, if you have less than 30 crown land uh, in increments of 10, you lose or you receive bigger penalties. So some of these penalties are not terrible, but you don't want to have zero crown land. So we're going to start with the clergy. We're going to come into here, we're going to take the religious state, so this is just a plus one monthly admin power, which is fantastic. <laughs> we now make four. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, then what we're going to do is, this is one of the most important ones, uh, reduction of the advisor cost. Each estate has its own version of this for diplo and military and admin, and uh, they're, they're incredibly important as well. So because we're a nation that starts out with a very good positive income, we're going to take this right away and we're going to run the advisors. If you're on a smaller nation that does not have the income to run advisors, I would only take maybe the military one because eh, it's just a little stab hit, you know what I mean? But then when you pick up, uh, sorry, stab cost hit, but when you pick up advisors, you definitely want to take these. So we're going to take it out of the gate. Uh, expansion of Zealotry is another must-have. Um, the way that it works is when you declare war against somebody who is not your religion, so Catholic, so anybody in Africa, all of these Sunnis, you gain five morale for 15 years. So uh, what happens is, let's say we attack Granada, and then in the next five years we attack Aragon, who is Catholic, we would still receive that bonus. So uh, the text may be a little bit um, deceptive if you don't know how to interpret it, but it's only if we are at peace with another religion for 15 years will we receive that negative. So out of the gate, we get the negative because, obviously, we've not been at war, but it'll go away as soon as we declare war on anybody in Africa. So we're going to take that. You can take church sanctuaries if you want to. I don't really mind. Um, but this one right here, religious culture, is uh, one of the most important ones to take. Right here, it costs us five crown land, which is okay, right here. But uh, what it does is it pretty much makes our province 10% better, which is incredibly valuable because I did that click and now they're all 10% better. Not to mention we get 1% missionary strength, which is good against the Sunnis. Um, if you're a smaller nation, we're Castile, we're not very small, uh, you could take religious diplomats to help you get a bigger nation to ally you sooner. So like, uh, let's say you were Trier and you wanted to use Burgundy to attack somebody, you could do uh, religious diplomats and maybe get them faster as an ally. It's also a good way to combat AE in the uh <laughs> in the hre it's uh it's pretty pretty op in there 
So we're going to move on to the military. We're going to take the military power. So now we're down to 5% crown land. That's not, not great. So these are the negatives for having f under 10%, which is uh, the biggest pain right here is this autonomy ticking. Tax, whatever. Not that not that terrible of a, of a thing. See, we have a 15% tax modifier right there. So it just basically wipes itself out. But this ticking autonomy is, is not good. Autonomy, you want it to be as low as possible at all times. Uh, so we took the military points. Um, I'm going to take increased levies, but not just yet. Uh, just because we're playing Castile, there's something that we have to do first. And we'll get into that in a moment. Uh, military advisor costs. We're going to take that because we're going to grab a military advisor. Uh, this one's also an easy one, a uh, good one to get. It just gives you uh, equilibrium to the other two, which is which is good. Uh, yeah, we're not going to play super far in the game, so I am going to take this. Uh, it doesn't really... We're never going to make it to absolutism. Um, so, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so we're good there. Then we're going to come into burgers. Now, see, we would take this point, but now we only have five crown land. And you need ten to pay for it. So, when we get more crown land, and when I feel comfortable with our crown land percentage, we're going to take the land of commerce and get that extra dipple point. It's good. It's not terrible to lose it right now. It's, it's good to have. I'm also going to take uh, patronage of the arts, because what did I say about tax? It's not, not the be-all end-all. We're going to go diplo advisor. We're going to take the burger loans. This is, if you're new to the game, this is free money, pretty much. Uh, a five-year loan at 1% interest, it's it's incredibly tiny. Um, right now our loan size is uh, 140, so taking that at a 1% interest is nothing. Uh, do not be afraid of loans in the beginning, or when you're playing this game. Uh, I know it can be scary that you have these negative... Uh, things against you or that you're, you're losing income and this is red instead of green like it's that's that's not as bad as it seems you can we'll take people's money when we're at war with them we're going to increase our size it's the very beginning of the game we have a long way to go we can lose money in the game in the beginning of the game because we're investing it into our nation to get more out of it uh, later on so don't worry about inflation. Inflation is important because you don't want it to get too high, but it's okay. In the beginning of the game, we can take inflation. We'll get rid of that. We can take uh, loans, the burger loans specifically, and it's going to be fine. We may even take a couple bank loans. It's no big deal. Uh, I'm also going to take private fleets because it increases our ship trade power. Uh, and we are Castile. We are a large navy. We want ship trade power. So now... I want to summon the diet, and what that's going to do is and give us five loyalty and influence. Influence doesn't really matter at the beginning of the game. Um, it does matter if it goes over 100. It's not terrible. A disaster can start, but you can just have high loyalty and negate that completely. So we're going to take the diet. It's going to give us three options for the clergy, nobility, and the burgers. We're just going to quickly take a look through. So that's increased relations with the papal state, which is fantastic. I wanted to ally the Pope man anyways. Uh, this is pretty good because that links up with um this mission we have here we need to have 60 percent, and this is 75 but we'll see what this one is next oh fantastic this one we can completely do um so for the next diet for the bur pro bleh, 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 proposal of the burgers we need to get 30 percent trade power in the safi node it says Agadir because the node comes out of the province of Agadir. That's where you can see these are in. Um, so on and so forth. So that's the one that we are going to take. And all we need to do for that is increase our trade power by 15% in the Safi node. And we will easily do that when we are at war with Morocco, because when we control their provinces, we end up controlling their trade as well. So that's a good a good thing to start with. So like I said, we want to ally the Pope. So that's going to be a good good ally, just because we want to get uh, the papacy. So this is the Holy See. If you're a Catholic nation, you'll have this. You can use uh, Pope points to increase your chance of becoming the uh, papal controller, which is something that we will do eventually. But right now, it's not the biggest of the deal. We're going to get a lot of Pope points because we're going to be converting a lot of uh, provinces. And you, and he obviously the Pope likes when you make more Catholics. So there's some pretty good uh, bonuses for being the papal controller. The number one thing that stands out in the beginning of the game to me is the advisor cost, 20%. Fantastic. 
10% or 5% tech cost is really good as well. And uh, 20% aggressive expansion impact, the second from the bottom, is uh, very, very good in single player games. Uh, so that's, that's something as well to look forward to. So we're going to come in here because we have so much money. We have $769. We're going to come in here and spend 150 of that to get one ticking Pope point a year. So it's 1.37. It's now 3.5, so we've we've doubled it. That's fantastic. Okay, now we've done estates, we've done that. This we're gonna go into the rivals. Uh, Burgundy rivaled us. There's an event in the game called the Burgundian Inheritance, where uh, this guy Philippe de Bourgogne he dies, and uh, any any. I think it still works like this. Any nation that's married to them has a chance to inherit them, but it's primarily between Austria and France, and then there's a conflict between the two, potentially, and it's it's something we don't have to worry about because we're in Iberia. We're not going into Europe. We can go into Europe later on if we want to, but this is just the standard Castile into Africa and the New World and the East. So uh, it's unfortunate that we got Burgundy. We'll just rival him anyways just for fun. He's going he's gonna to die. So we're going to get uh, power projection for eclipsing him or, or him falling off, whatever it may be. Uh, France, unfortunate, not the end of the world. Uh, <laughs> I want to do Morocco, but just not yet. And let's say we do England. Not the end of the world. Uh, normally what would happen is he's allied to England at the beginning of the game, Portugal, and we are going to ally Portugal as well. There'd be a malice, but we have historical friends, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, we're going to speed up the game a little bit. I play off at four speed. And we're going to hold off on this one. Uh, what I want to do is I want to use it against Morocco. So they're an option for us. They're 45% weaker than us, which is fantastic. But uh, I need to walk through him first to get to Tlemcen. So I can't rival him if I want to use his territory to get through. So we can currently get access. We will do that shortly. But uh, I don't want to rival them yet. I'm going to hold on to that, and we're going to wait on that. So I'm going to grab some advisors, because we took the, uh, the penalty for it. Um, again, we make a lot of money. So I'm going to go big. We're going to get Tier 2 advisors. See, this is why inflation doesn't really matter that much. Um, until it gets like to a certain point, like 15 and over, then you need to be a little bit worried. But uh, up until then, you can just use this guy to take it down easily. Um, we're going to be throwing our error out of the window, so I'm going to take the Prestige Advisor because it's such little inflation at the beginning of the game. This Prestige is going to help us. We lose 50 Prestige when we make this button click. Uh, should we should we do it right now? What kind of general is he again? Enrique. Nice, not that great. Okay. If he's a good general, try to use him in these wars, but he's not a good general, so we're just going to get rid of him. So now we have minus 26 Prestige. It is a bit of a penalty to our uh, morale, but it's it's not not the end of the world. We have a lot of morale. We are Spain. Uh, and the reason why we have a lot of morale is because of this. Our tradition. We have 15% morale, so we're going to be really strong in the beginning of the game. Okay, so as Spain, one of our primary goals is to trade. But right now, we want to get this guy right here, because he's going to help us build our spy network faster. And, oh, dang, there's no uh, morale. Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to, we're going we're gonna to cycle both bottoms, both level ones. It wasn't that bad of a hit. Uh, but then we're going to look for either discipline or morale in these two. And that's really going to help us out. Uh, okay, so I know that's been a long run up to the beginning of the game. But now we're finally, oh no, we're not even going to unpause yet. Okay, so an important thing to do is take a look at your missions. So this mission right here is to colonize this, and then that sends us down the way to the Caribbean, uh, into the Spanish Main, that's like Colombia and stuff like that, and into Mexico. Uh, this is what we are going to be focusing right on right here, prepare the Reconquista. Uh, that just means that we need to beat up poor little Granada over here. Uh, we have a truce with them until the 48th, or, or until 48, so we've got four years to prepare for that, which is fine. Um, but to get there, we need to have our navy at full size, our army at full size, and then our manpower at 60%. So currently we have 8k out of 29k, and we need to get that up. We need to get probably like 21, 22k, something like that 
is where we need to go. Probably not even that high. Yeah, it's only 6%. But uh, we're going to use our army professionalism to get us there. So at the beginning of the game, a lot of nations... Well, we can check. Um, yeah, a lot of nations don't really have professionalism. Yeah, see, there's only a handful of European nations that do. Uh, but so we're one of the lucky ones that we do in the beginning of the game. Uh, this is important to get in multiplayer because you'll just be able to pump more manpower out with these slackens and then you can just drag on wars. You also get bonuses for fire damage and shock damage and sieging, which is which is good. Uh, so we're just going to click this. So we get 3.5k manpower for 5 professionalism. Now we're going to do that again. So we're up to 15.5, which is fantastic. We're 50% of our manpower. Pretty much, uh, pretty much just there, and we're gonna go from there. It'll tick up as we go on. We gain 300 each month, which is fantastic. We're just gonna assign our generals. So our king is leading this army. Three, three, two star general. That's not bad. Our scripted general is pretty good too. Uh, we're gonna move these guys down to the south. We're not gonna have any rebels, hopefully, or anything like that. Uh, we're also gonna come in here. People would say to just delete these forts, but I'm going to keep them just in case. I also, I also hate when you don't have a fort against rebels, but for the time being, we're going to mothball them. Okay, so you can just come in here and you can hit H on your keyboard like that, or you can click the button. What happens is it's going to remove the garrison from there. So this one has a thousand because it's still our capital fort, but this one now has a garrison of zero. This is essentially a normal um, province. It'll get taken down in a month. And then the enemy will have our castle if they decide to pay for it as well. And then they'll carry on. Uh, so we're just going to mothball both those guys. We're going to move down. We have to get to full force limit on our boats. So we're going to come in here. I hit B on my keyboard. And then you go to the boats. And we're going to make three carracks. Uh, we're going to find short times for it. So this one's short, whatever. And it's in the south, so it'll be fine. Basically, what we need to do is ensure that we do not lose the naval combat to Morocco. We're going to ally Portugal, use their navy to help us as well. They've got 19 boats, we've got 20, soon to be 23. And then uh, that's going to allow us to cross this strait. The Gibraltar, that little red dot, is a ga uh, pass between Jabal Tariq and Quetta. So it'll be fine, or Sueda. We're not going to be worried about Aragon. He's friendly with us. We're going to get all of that land through an event called the Iberian Wedding. Uh, right now, Aragon starts with Naples over here as a junior partner. This is the Diplo map screen. I have it as uh, R on my keyboard, and then I flip between W for the political map mode down here, and then Diplomatic with R. So we can see who our allies are, and then we can click on these guys and see who their subjects and their diplomatic status is. So Naples is a junior partner of Aragon. They have an event that comes up hap or that happens. I believe it's when uh, the Aragonese king Alphonse dies. Uh, they generally release Naples, but we'll be able to get Naples back if they don't uh, keep them. So it's gonna be fun. Oh yeah, we need this last advisor. <laughs> oh yeah, we're waiting for the month. Sorry. So we're finally, finally, finally gonna unpause the game in just a moment. Psych. We're gonna come into covert actions. We're gonna build the spy network on Tlemcen. Uh, what I'm doing is just right-clicking on the nations to pull up the Diplos. So that's a little handy trick if you want to do that. I, shut, I collapse all these all the time. I know people that play with them open. It's it's all up to you. Uh, we're going to take our light ships and we're going to hunt pirates in Sevilla. Now this isn't this isn't crucial. This is a little bit like of a, a next step up. It's just going to save you a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do is, is all of these North Africans, these, these uh, Berber nations, can pirate us. So we're going to send our boats out, and we're actually going to do it with these ones too, to, uh, to hunt all the pirates so that we, they won't be able to raid our coastal provinces, which, which should be nice. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, oh, that's for privateering. Never mind. Okay, so you guys ready to pause the game? Because because here we go. We're gonna f we're finally gonna do it. All right. So our troops are moving down south. Oh, something that I did. I just paused the game. We have a fair amount of time before this becomes twenty, so we can turn off our uh, army maintenance and see how much money we're making. We're making a lot of money. 
So it's a good time to be alive. Oh, there's another thing that I forgot to do. We're going to seize land. Ha ha. Now we're back up to 10% crown land. So we're taking, we've halved our autonomy penalty. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff to know. It is uh, an overwhelming game, but uh, it, it's it's very rewarding when you actually learn how to play it. It's very fun. So we're going to pause the game again. We're going to go over here. We're going to send an alliance to Portugal. They're obviously going to take it. Uh, that screen that just popped up that I got rid of really quickly is about the Papa Bull. So this is a bonus that all Christians get. Uh, well, I guess all Catholics get. So it's five dev costs, which is good. This is normally the one he takes in the beginning of the game. And if we become the courier controller, we can pick which one. And we'll go over that if we if we ever get there. So we've got our maintenance off. We're just going to let the game roll out. We want to... Okay, so Navarra is this little nation right here. There's an event, again, that happens where either I, as Castile, or... Oh my god, he allied Albania. Uh, Aragon will get uh, a PU on Navarra because he is okay yeah I thought he was scripted as the same king here oh he's this guy I believe yes so the king of Navarra is the heir of Aragon so there's just some scripted shit that happens with them that uh, they they become PU'd. We're not going to deal with that right now. We have a mission to deal with that, but we'll deal with that later. Uh, okay, okay. Time goes. So this is Portugal saying, hey, let's get married. Sure, why not? Uh, what we want to do is... Oh, no. Morocco's rivaled us. Okay. So I was going to wait. There's no point in waiting now. Uh, is there... Who's he allied to? Oh, Tugert. That's incredible. Okay. I got lucky. I've done this plenty of times before where Morocco allies Granada and Tunis. And that's a 3v2 between you and Portugal. It is very doable. Um, but uh, yeah, it's unfortunate that I won't be able to show that off. Uh, we got lucky that he allied just a little tiny guy in this. These, these nations are, are non-existent pretty much. It's just terrible desert. They're all three development provinces. It's just not good. Um, but we're going to go. We're building on Tlemcen. We're playing the game. We're going to build a spy network on our rival Morocco. That's going to help us siege down their provinces faster. Like right here, they have a... Uh, this is the um, simple terrain map mode. I have it on Q. Uh, so what this means is these are all grasslands. These ones here, you see the mouse over it. says grasslands. These are dry lands. These are mountains, uh, hills, and then these are highlands. Each province has different modifiers on it. So you can click on it and then mouse over the picture. Uh, this one has a dice roll for attackers minus one. And a dev cost penalty, which kind of stinks. Um, so forts or mountains are a dice roll for attackers minus two. So we want to have defensive battles in good places. This is a very important thing that a lot of new players don't realize uh, is in the game or is as important as it is. Because every time that we fight, all that happens is there's dice rolls. All the time. So if we're continuously taking a minus two, then that is a big <laughs> penalty against us. We're going to have a harder fight. But if the enemy takes a minus two, then we're going to probably get a stack wipe, which is knocking the entire army off the map, uh, which is always good. Oh yeah, sorry. We had a month tick go by. We got a level one discipline advisor. We're going to grab him. Now we're cruising. We could also... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to promote this guy because we have so much income and I want mill points. They're incredibly important. Now we're only paying three ducats because we're 24.5 off because the inflation is a negative penalty to advisors. This is a hard cap at 90%. So you can have 90% off, which is fantastic. And then it also stacks with this over here where it says this advisor is 50% cheaper for your country to employ. So the lower our advisor cost bonuses and stacked with that 50 percent you are going to have incredibly cheap advisors and you're going to be making military po or mana points mana points are the diplo admin and military um after playing a bunch of multiplayer games one of the most crucial stats is how much mana can you generate uh that really separates the uh the men from the boys when it comes to that uh, 
Sorry, my dog's barking something outside. I gotta let her back in. That. We'll deal with that later. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. <laughs> Moving forward, I'll edit that out. We're just gonna tick out. We're gonna let this game roll until we get this up to 20. Um, this they got a cardinal. That's nice. We have one cardinal. This is the religious map mode. Uh, T on my screen, my computer. Uh, I still have one missing. Oh, I didn't click this. That's right. Okay, Morocco, rival. We're sitting on a bunch of money, which is fantastic. The surrender of Maine happened. Here we go. So this is a scripted event where France and England end up in a fight together. This is actually an offensive war by England. Um, <laughs> yeah, French-English Hundred-Year War. Uh, so, so there, that's a scripted event that happens all the time. They can either surrender it and surrender Maine and take peace, or France is going to attack them and France is going to beat them. But it's it's highly unlikely that they lose it. It's achievable as a player, difficult, but uh, still achievable. All right, fifteen. So on the next month, we're going to come into our income. We're going to jack this back up. Now we're not making too much money, but we're getting our uh, morale back on these guys. So right now our morale is at about a quarter, a third, sorry. And uh, yeah, we need it. We need it up for when we start to declare war. Because uh, where our boats go? Here they are. We need to use our uh, transports to be able to get across. We're probably going to get pirated in this point. Um, because we need to defeat <laughs> the navies here. So what I did there is I just clicked on the main one, and then if you click on the button here, or you hit the hotkey V, it will remove the transports. Okay, V does not want to remove the transports, but if you click that, it works. There we go. So we're going to move those guys in. We're going to leave our lights to keep protecting pirates. Um, Granada just made a claim on us. Not a big deal. They just claimed Sevilla, so that means that we can take a claim on these guys. We're going to do Dara. Because it's the highest development province, so it has the biggest, uh, or it has a bonus cost reduction because it's the target, the primary target. Um, but it's not a big deal. We're not actually going to take the province. We're just going to straight up vassalize these guys, and and it might be a different concept or something you might not heard about, but it's it's a really good thing. We're just going to make them our subject. Um, now, what we want to be able to do is when we are back up in our uh, morale. We're going to declare against them and we're going to have to defeat their navy and get across. So uh, we can continue Excellent. Yeah, we can continue to uh, build spy network against them because they have a hills fort, or a highlands fort, sorry. And that's uh, important for them to it's important for us for that to fall. There's also this fort as well. Um we just want this to go down as fast as possible, and the spy network increases our uh, siege ability against them. Okay, so here's something that is a little advanced, or it's not that advanced if you've played computer games before, but a lot of people don't know this is in the game. Select an army, hit Control 1. And up here in this little side modifier thing, it says 1. I'm going to select my other army, and I'm going to hit 2. So now, let's say I'm over here in, uh, this is like Siberia. I can hit 1 twice, and it pulls me back to this army. Now, if I'm over here looking at my, oh, one of my favorite nations, Hess, I hit 2-2, two, two, sorry, 2-2, two, two, and now we're back. It's 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 really important, or it's really beneficial to have that when you're in a lot of different theaters. But uh, but I digress. We're going <laughs> to finally declare war here against the Lemsen. So, uh, Jared is their ally. That's fantastic. They kind of suck. They're a little tiny nothing nation. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, yeah. We, uh, we don't really care. So we're going to declare against them. See, right down here, they have 10,000 infantry, 3,000 horses. We have 17,000 infantry, 7,000 horses. Uh, and then what we're going to do is end up having Tlemcen's army. So I right-click on their nation, go to declare war. I want Dara. We're going to declare on them. No big deal. Um, we want to launch these boats. So you can come in here and click Attach to Transport, or you can hit A. And then when we leave... It picks them up. It picks up 10. So it's left behind 2. That's not a big deal. We'll select these two, merge them down with the G button, and then this guy's going to go out, and then those guys will eventually walk over. 
this means that we're going to catch this boat on the next on tomorrow. So we are going to take out their one boat. They've got 11. It's not a big deal. We've won that. Jared has no coastline, so therefore no boats. Select this unit again here, and then select here, and we're going to move them across. So they're going to leave from this boat, and it's going to take them a month and 15 days to disembark from this boat to get to Mars El Mers El Kabir. Uh, if the enemy walks there, if you see an AI doing this to you, stand where they're going to attack you because you're probably going to beat them up. You take a pretty big penalty for uh, for landing on a crossing. So f two more weeks. Oh, fantastic. This is not good. So our king died and we got a horrible horrible error but that's fine this might happen to you it's not the end of the world what does suck is that we were using the king as a general i really didn't think he was going to die at 39 normally he lives for a fairly good time if this was a good if this was a good king this would be incredible to happen this would be so good but uh no we're gonna we're gonna play through this so what happened because we're at war well our king was a general remember there was a general on this army there was two stars now there's none so we took a stability hit. So we need 130 points to be able to boost that back up again. Minus one stab's not not good, not great, not the end of the world though. Um, sorry, my dog's bugging me. So over here is what you see you lose. As it goes further down, you get more and more penalties. Uh, interest per annum's not great because we have loans. So at the beginning of next month, we're gonna stab up. We're also gonna go rogue. Oh! Ho, ho, ho! Enrique the fourth is going to lead our armies to victory. So what's going to happen here is uh, these guys have landed. They're going to siege this province down. I'm going to bring my boats back over. Actually, no, I'm going to leave them out. And what happens is on the month tick, uh, we're going to step up. On the month tick, you would steal money from this. So you see how there's uh, a little bit of there's a little line missing from there. These guys do it too. So you take the money. So it's always important to try to move after the month tick happens. I'll uh, I'll try to try to bring that back up again. So I'm gonna hit A on my keyboard. I'm gonna bring the boats out, and then we're gonna wait until there we are. Mars Mars El Kabir is taken. We're gonna move into that province, and then what's gonna happen is they are going to land there and they're going to get there instantly now this 20k stack is going to scare Tlemcen and they're going to book it they're probably going to run somewhere over here or somewhere over here because they don't have access into our land right uh, not yet at least and if they do we'll, we'll deal with that so this is something that i enjoy doing as well this might be a little bit advanced it's just using hotkeys when you want to move from one coast to another hold down control and then move click right click and say yes and then what's going to happen is that boat is going to land there pick them up and then drop them off over here which is exactly what we want to do see they got on the boat and now they've landed that took three days uh, fantastic so we're going to send our boats back out uh, uh yeah no worries we're going to send our boats back out just to put some pressure on them out there so they've moved to uja Ujda. Now, can we move into there? No, we cannot. The only thing that we can do, because we're in this fort's zone of control, is move into the fort, which is okay. If we would have came in from Morocco, if they didn't rival us, we would have been able to uh, to enter here and here and then go there. But uh, they've just kind of fort blocked us. But it's 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 not a not a terrible thing. Uh, we are taking attrition here, but that's not the end of the world. All right, so. We are now over our manpower, which is good. We're over 60%, so we need 100% of our force limit and 100% of our navy. So our navy is uh, done in September of this year. Okay, fantastic. So what I'm going to do is I hit B again on my keyboard, and we need 9 units to be able to get to 33. We could hire units, but that would dip into our manpower and lower us before, uh, below 60%. So I'm going to come into here. I'm going to do the mercenaries. We're going to take the free company because they're incredibly cheap. 
And you should always take the free company. No matter what nation you are, always take the free company at the beginning of the game. It's very important. We didn't do it yet because we were waiting for this to tick up. Now that we're at war, these guys are 60% or 70% done. That's fantastic. So you can actually take it in a province that you control. So that's why I wanted to wait for to come over here. So we're just going to wait for them to pop up. And there they are. So there's 6k troops that have a manpower of almost 14k. So we now have 19 and 14, so 34,000 troops uh, as, as manpower, which Clemson has 11k. Now, we're still not at our force limit. We need another three, but, you know, it's going to be okay. These guys have a reduction in, uh, in attrition. They move quick, and they have a siege pip. They have a general with a siege pip, so we're going to get these ones as well. So that's going to put us over our uh, force limit. That's not, not the end of the world. We're going to take a, a, a penalty for that, like an economic penalty. But again, not, not terrible. Okay, so we got a 252 error, and our wife is really good. Wow. Uh, too bad that she's not in charge. This would be fantastic. The kid's not great, but uh, this sucks too. Oh well. So we're going to wait for these guys to move or to pop up, and then we're going to take our mercenaries. These guys are still building, I believe. Yes, you can see the little guy hitting the hammer. There they go. Alright, so these guys have a siege pip. We're going to move those guys on there. We're going to merge these two together. It asks to split it in half, and then it brings it back down to the 12 and 12. And the pain in the butt is that uh, it removes the, uh, the, the units. So you just have to reset it. And you can set these guys to be as one as well. Um... We can attach this to the other one, so you'd only have to move around technically three armies. Uh, now we're not taking attrition because we own this province. We're just going to sit here while this goes down, and we deal with these events. So, I'm going to take the army tradition, because that's a little bit of morale and fun stuff, but it's at the penalty of morale. Well. Alright, yeah, sometimes there is downtime. See how our uh, winter at war, our moth, our forts become unmothballed, so there's 3,000 men guarding these. We could turn that off again. I don't think that Tlemcen's going to get across, so let's just say we turn that one off. Now we're losing six ducats a month, but it's not, not the end of the world, you know? Okay, our boats are done. It's fantastic. It's uh, almost November, so we're going to move them out as well. We've been pirated. We have not been pirated. These six ships that are protecting for pirates are keeping us alive. It's fantastic. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get this mission. We're going to get a morale boost. We're going to get claims on Navarro, this little guy that was talking about before, and on Upper Andalusia, which is this entire state, which is all of Granada. So we're going to take that, which is fantastic. And then it's going to tell us that we got claims on Granada and Navarra. And if we go to the Diplo screen, we see these yellow lines. Those are our claims. Uh... We're going to stop this recording and carry on in the next one uh, at this point. I know that it's a lot to take in, but uh, look for me in part two.